Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a complete review of the Kindle Paperwhite 3. So this one was just released here in June 2015. It's basically the exact same as the earlier generation Paperwhite 2, but they added a new higher resolution 300 pixel per inch a screen. So we've got a newer screen here, but I mean it's basically the same exact Paperwhite. You got the same processor, same amount of memory. Well, they did increase the memory of the last Paperwhite halfway through, so it just sort of depends on when you got that one. But uh, this one comes with four gigabytes now, um, and we've also got uh, boost in RAM, which I guess helps with indexing and uh, like large files. But I, I've never seen an, an improvement as far as the RAM boost goes. I mean page turns and menu and loading books and everything's the exact same speed as the old device. So um, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the features. Let's just sort of talk about the hardware first. So uh, this new Kindle Paperwhite 3, the main thing you can tell it from the Paperwhite, the earlier Paperwhites is this dark Kindle logo right there. It blends in. Uh, whereas the other earlier models, it's sort of light colored and it stands out a lot more. Uh, so the Paperwhite 3 has the more blacked out Kindle version. And it's very easy to tell that. And then on the back, we've got the same sort of deal as the older Kindle Paperwhite. Just sort of a soft texture with the rounded edges. Uh, it fits really comfortable in your hand. I do really like how comfortable this Kindle's design fits in your hand. And you got sort of a bigger area at the bottom. So it offers a couple different ways to hold it. So um, with this device, we've got the capacitive touch screen. It's got that little bit of an indented uh, ridge right here just for the, uh, it doesn't have that flush front screen like the Voyage has. You don't have any buttons or anything uh, like the Voyage offers those sensors, but this device, it's all touch screen interface. There is no buttons whatsoever other than the power button down here. And then there's the USB port and sort of an LED indicator when you're charging. So the high res screen is most noticeable when you use like these really small font sizes. The text is clearer, it's just sharper. Um, it's not really as noticeable in the higher fonts though. It just sort of makes the text a little bit darker. Um, it looks really nice and clear, but it's not quite as nice as the screen on the Kindle Voyage if you want to check my comparison review between those. I think the difference is the capacitive layer uh, for the Paperwhite. It just sort of degrades the screen quality just a touch, but it's still really, it's still really good, but it's still not quite as good as the Voyage. So this new Paperwhite has the exact same software as the older versions. You're not getting any additional software features whatsoever. Amazon uh, is going to be updating with a new layout engine with the release of the Paperwhite 3, but at, here at launch it doesn't have it yet. I'll be uploading a separate review showing the new layout engine. Uh, it has hyphenation and some uh, new aspects to the way text is rendered. So I'll upload a separate review of that one that happens. But right now, I mean, it's still the exact same software as Paperwhite 2. The one difference is the new font that they've added with this uh, release of this new device. It's called the Bookerly font. So it's the one that uh, I'm using right now. It's a really uh, nice clear font, but it's quite thin. Some people don't really like how thin it is, but it's just sort of like a personal preference. Uh, I still like, prefer to embed my own fonts, and then that really takes advantage of the high resolution screen even more. This one is uh, one I embedded in the book. It's just a little bit darker. I don't know. I just sort of like the darker, a little bit thicker fonts myself. Uh, but it all comes down to personal preference. A lot of folks are kind of annoyed that they can't use custom fonts on Kindle devices, but you can. You just have to embed them in the ebook and you can use whatever font you want. But uh, so otherwise, you're uh, limited to these seven uh, Kindle fonts, these default fonts. The book really, like I said, that's the, uh, the new font that comes with the Kindle devices, with the new software that can be releasing and come the, with the release of this Paperwhite. Um, it looks, it's a good looking font, don't get me wrong, but I just sort of like this font a little bit better, it's just a touch darker as you can tell. Alright, so let's talk about the front light a bit now. Uh, it seems to be the same in level with the same sort of light that the Paperwhite 2 had. I mean it's got, uh, it's not quite as nice as the Voyage's light which is a touch wider and just a touch a little a more just slightly like unobvious that it's a front light. This one has a little bit lighter, uh, a little bit more shadowy area at the bottom. Maybe a little bit touch of a brighter spot right there. So this is the front light maxed out, it does look good nice and even. I do like the front light on these paper white devices. Like I said, the Voyage, I think it just has a slight edge. But these Vo these paper whites are among some of the best with the front lights. Uh, so my camera automatically adjusts for the brightness, so I don't know how well it's going to work showing these brightness levels. It's probably just all going to look basically the same, but so if we go down really low, you can get an idea of how low the, the front light goes at night when you're reading. And it does look really good, I think. Uh, like I said, there's just a touch of shadowy areas down at the bottom, which is pretty typical of pretty much every front light out there. Um, so that's not really uncommon or anything, but uh, so the one thing that this doesn't have, it doesn't have the auto adjusting front light like the Voyage has. You have to adjust it manually with that 
right there. Alright, so I covered pretty much all the hardware stuff. Let's talk about software. Kindle software, we've got vocabulary builder. So whenever you look up a word in the dictionary, it gets added to this vocabulary builder. You can reference and look at flashcards later. Uh, we can add notes and highlights to everything. You can switch over to landscape mode if you like reading like this, which is kind of nice because the device is really comfortable to hold that way. Um, but uh, yeah, so we can switch over to landscape. Uh, we also got the about this book, some of these features in here, just sort of like additional features to get more info about the book. Uh, we've got the Goodreads integration. Got the WordWise feature, so when we turn on WordWise, it will, it's only available on certain books, but it's available on a lot of books now, and it will give like recommendations. This is a side-loaded book, so it's not going to work. It'll give synonyms, so you can, like for kids or something, it'd be a good feature to have enabled. Okay, so some of these other features in here, we've got the reading progress indicator. So that's this little thing down here at the bottom, and you can set it to show time left in book, time left in chapter. Uh, you can also show, just have it display page in book, location to book, or nothing, because if you just get kind of annoyed with it, you can turn it off. You can also tap right there. All right, so, you know, the usual, I don't know why I even show this anymore. Every ebook reader on the planet basically has highlighting. You can add text notes. We can share things on Facebook and Twitter. They recently uh, made it so you can spare, share stuff with specific people instead of broadly on Facebook and Twitter. So we got some new options with that on the Paperwhite or on all Kindles, really. Uh, we got the little navigator icon right here. I really do like this. When I'm reviewing other devices, I miss this feature because it's really nice to be able to scan through pa pages quickly. If you're looking for something to reference, um, it does help. And you can jump chapters right here. You can just jump around randomly on that dial. And then when you go to a page, if you want to go back, you just hit the back button. It'll take you back to where you were. Uh, so we've got some other features here. We can add the bookmarks. Uh, let's go ahead and, yeah, the bookmarks are cool. Uh, if you just tap up there, you can add them as well. And then once you have them added, if you tap, tap on one, you can jump around. Uh, and there's also another window. Let's add another bookmark here. Uh, so if we do this, uh, pops up this little window here, like sort of that preview. So you can just jump around between the previews. These are some advanced features that really make Kindles unique from other e-readers. No other e-readers have stuff like that where you can see the window of another page and jump jump around. It makes finding things a lot easier. Um, it really is nice. We've got the x-ray feature. This is another a Kindle specific feature. You're not going to get this on any other device. I mean, no Kobos, Nooks, nothing uh, has anything like this where you get notable clips from the book. You get it works really well when you're uh, reading large books with lots of characters. You can just sort of get a brief synopsis of what each character is. If you like, forgot what the character, who the character was, it tells you how many times they're mentioned. You see how prominent they are. So that's just some of the cool extra features you get with Kindles that like a lot of other devices don't have. That's just sort of one of the things that separates them. So I mean, you don't have as much control over your, like your fonts and your layout as other devices, uh, but you do have a lot of additional software features that do uh, add to the reading experience. Uh, we can go back to the home screen here. You got different views. Pretty much everyone uses the the uh, book cover view nowadays, but you can also go to list view if you want to show uh, a couple more titles at once. I, I I don't like having the ad there, but it costs twenty dollars extra to remove this. So if you want to get rid of the ad, you can get rid of it by paying an extra twenty bucks. Um, one thing about the home screen natively is that it has sort of another ad right here, and it only shows three titles by default. You got to go into settings. Uh, device options, um, personalize your Kindle, uh, what is it here, it's the, the uh, advanced in options and you can turn off uh, cover view recommendations on home screen uh, and you also got this next in series, this is a newer feature where it tells you, asks you to buy the second book in a series when you're reading a book, so we got the whisper sync here which syncs all your book content, your, your last page read, your annotations and all that, so that's pretty standard Kindle feature, uh, we've got the special offers like I was complaining about uh, you can let pay Amazon to get rid of this, or you can just have have it shown down here. And it also shows when you turn the device off on the screen saver. So that's what these special offers are. So that just sort of advertises on the screen when it's turned off. I really hate the swipe to unlock. I wish it would just turn on, but that's just one of those things. So like I said, this is how it normally shows by default. You got these list of recommended titles down here, which is really annoying. So it's a lot nicer to just go into settings and make it so that you get four page or full page of the books that you have on your device. Everything's separated by your items, books, periodicals. You can sideload your own 
uh, books on here, obviously. And you can have them sent to Amazon if you just use their cloud feature, and then it'll be stored in the cloud. So, like, uh, it really helps it with like syncing if you want to get the additional Kindle features uh, for side loaded books. All right, folks, that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. It's getting way too long. Uh, check out ebookreader.com for some additional information. I'll have more info uh, in the written review. Also, check out the tips and tricks guide I have here uh, available on the Kindle store for some additional uh, Kindle tips and tricks for the Kindle Paperwhite. So uh, you guys have a good day and thank you guys for watching.